Arvin's grandson was fatally shot on First Avenue in Red Lion. She is frustrated there is still no arrest. Police say the seventh grader was shot by a classmate after an argument. The suspect had gone home and gotten a gun, then returned and made a joke about Kane's mother. A Kane told him to shut up. That's when he was shot. This boy shot him in the back at close range, and Kane just made a noise and fell to the ground. The district attorney's office will only say this is an active case, but has no further comment. Back to you, Lori. All right, Janelle, thank you. And new tonight, the Democrat-controlled State House has passed a bill to expand protections for the LGBTQ community. The House bill, which sponsors titled the Fairness Act, expands non-discrimination protections in employment, housing, and public accommodations on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. This is the first time this type of LGBTQ legislation has advanced through a chamber of the Pennsylvania General Assembly. This will be the place where if you come here, you will know that your rights are protected, that you will be wrapped in freedom, equality, fairness, and the justice, which is love spoken out loud. And that bill now goes to the Republican-controlled state Senate. Also in the state capitol, Pennsylvania nurses are calling on lawmakers to pass the Patient Safety Act. It would require hospitals to limit how many patients are assigned to a single nurse. Nurses unions and lawmakers supporting legislation were at the Capitol today saying those limits would reduce burnout among overworked nurses, potentially keeping more nurses from quitting. Even in doing our best, we are unable to prevent most of these things simply because of the staffing situations we are put in. The House committee held a hearing today about the legislation. Leaders from Pennsylvania hospitals argued the proposal will not guarantee better care. Violating the proposed law could land a warning on a first offense with fines starting at $7,500 for repeat offenders. Also new tonight, police in Ephrata say a man reporting to be from a utility company tried to get into a woman's home. Police say 21-year-old Devin Duong of Philadelphia showed up at a woman's apartment at South Reading and Meadow Valley Roads and said he needed to come in and check the appliances in her apartment regarding her electric bill. The victim said she had to force the door closed and call police. Police found Duong with a group claiming they were trying to get people to sell or switch to another utility company. Police say the group did not have a solicitation permit. Duong is charged with harassment. Well, definitely feeling more like March out there instead of May. That's what we've seen the last couple of days. Just really not, not very nice weather. This is a look from our Lebanon sky cam. And the thing is, Ethan, not only is it chilly, but you just have this like really light rain. Yeah, it seems very consistent. Yeah, and we're going to keep this type of weather around as we head through the day tomorrow. So I saw the video and the photos out there of people out there at the baseball diamond at Clipper Magazine Stadium. They were all just bundled up. We were near record low uh, coldest high temperatures out there today and we're going to do that again tomorrow. We still have that thick cloud cover. Here's the good news. A lot of the rain has dissipated. We'll get some breaks in the clouds and the winds will not be as intense as they were last night, but it's still going to be chilly right now. 48 degrees in Lancaster, 46 for you folks in Lebanon and 51 currently in York. We do have some scattered showers and they'll be out there. The heaviest of the rain will stay west of, of the mountains and there actually could still be some snow showers at times for areas along the ridge tops of the Laurel Highlands. It's all thanks to this upper level low that's been with us and stays with us through the day tomorrow. So temperatures once again will challenge record coldest high temperatures as we will only see highs tomorrow in the lower 50s. But warmer weather is in the forecast. You're just going to have to wait until the weekend. I'll talk about that more coming up in just a few minutes. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks, Ethan. We are learning new details about the seven bodies found at an Oklahoma home. Authorities now say some of those bodies found are those of a convicted sex offender and two missing teenage girls. As Emily Schmidt reports, the discovery was made yesterday at the sex offender's home just hours after records show he missed a scheduled court appearance. Over the weekend in Henrietta, Oklahoma, it appears something happened that took a regular teenage Saturday night sleepover. Ivy and Brittany were going to Tiffany's, um, so nothing out of the ordinary. And turned it into something the county sheriff says he's never seen before. Not this magnitude, no. Seven bodies discovered at the home of 39-year-old Jesse McFadden. Officials identified McFadden as one of the dead and believe 14-year-old Ivy Webster and 16-year-old Brittany Brewer were two of the others. The medical examiner will make final identifications. I wanted to go on the land and get the answers myself, and I know I can't.
Webster's parents say they had known the McFadden since 2020, but did not know Jesse McFadden was a registered sex offender or that he was set to stand trial for solicitation of a minor. Our daughter was best friends with Tiffany, his daughter, and they were inseparable. They did everything together. Investigators have shared few details of what they believe happened. There's no suspect at large that we are looking for right at this moment, so that's the most important thing. Ivy's mother says she messaged Ivy via Snapchat until around midnight Saturday. She says Jesse McFadden called Sunday saying they were in a nearby town and there was a bad connection. I believe the girls were already gone at that point. Brittany Brewer's family is also mourning, and so is a community wondering how much they did not know about the person just down the road. I'm Emily Schmidt reporting. London police say a controlled explosion has been carried out as a precaution outside Buckingham Palace after a man was arrested on suspicion of possessing an offensive weapon. Metropolitan police said officers arrested the man after he approached the palace gates tonight and threw items suspected to be shotgun cartridges onto the grounds. Police say a bag deemed suspicious was found in the suspect's possession. There were no reports of shots fired or any injuries. The Fed is holding a key meeting tomorrow, and Jerome, uh, Jerome Powell has expected to either pause interest rate hikes or announce the 10th consecutive increase. A look at the two options, what that could mean for you. That's coming up on News 8 at 10. Cash payment apps becoming more popular as a way to transfer money to friends and family. They're also becoming a favorite tool for scammers to target your wallet. I'm made on your side consumer investigator Brian Roach. Coming up, I'll tell you how the lure of some easy money is nothing but a trap. First, so let's take a look at tonight's lottery numbers. You're watching WGAL News 8. Well, a critical week for the U.S. economy as both Wall Street and Americans look to the Federal Reserve for some clarity. The Fed has the option to pause the rate hikes or issue its 10th consecutive increase. 
aimed at lowering inflation. So what does this mean for our finances? Cole Higgins has a closer look in today's Consumer Watch. Weighing another potential interest rate hike amid mixed inflation data and growing banking turmoil as another bank fails. The Federal Reserve is meeting this week to decide next steps to tame stubborn inflation. They need to get that down to their target, which is 2%. And uh, the, the way to do that is to raise rates. So what does the Fed's decision this Wednesday mean for your wallet? Some analysts expect the central bank to raise rates a tenth consecutive time, this time by a quarter point. If that happens, expect higher borrowing costs from car loans to mortgages. If we got a personal loan, uh, you're going to see your rate go up. A home equity line of credit, you'll, you'll see your rate go up. And of course, if you need to borrow money for anything like a new car. Meanwhile, there's also the possibility that the Fed could pause its aggressive action to cool down the overheated economy. Experts say if that's the route the Fed takes, it could be a good opportunity for consumers who have been sidelined by rising interest rates. This is definitely going to be um, treated by a lot of would be home buyers as a sign that maybe now is the time to start that home hunt again. No matter what Fed Chairman Jerome Powell announces this week, the decision will give us a clear indication about the Fed's plans for the rest of the year. So if you're planning to make major purchases in 2023, like buying a car or a home, this week's announcement could give you guidance about what you can expect in terms of borrowing costs. For Consumer Watch, I'm Cole Higgins. Scammers try to lure you in by offering money. Eight on your side, consumer investigator Brian Roach shows you the latest scam email. For scammers, it's always about the money. They either promise to give you big bucks or they threaten your bank account that they'll take it away. Either way, their goal in the end is always to take your money. A viewer sent me this email, which claims they're having trouble delivering $500 to the victim's Cash App account. Cash App, of course, is a person-to-person -person payment service, which in this case, the viewer has never used. This email asks the targeted victim to please complete your contact info to make sure it is properly delivered to you. Bad grammar, as I've said before, always a sure sign of a scam. On its website, Cash App says this kind of email can lead to several different scams if you click on the box at the bottom where it says confirm here. That link could lead to a request for bank account information, social security numbers, or some other kind of personal information. Sure, the thought of getting $500 you weren't expecting sounds fantastic, but if an email like this is a total surprise to you and it's got a link to click on, Trust your instincts and avoid this scam. Keep your money in your pocket. I'm Brian Roach on your side, WGAL News 8. Now, the WGAL News 8 Storm Team forecast with meteorologist Ethan Houston. Cold and dreary today, cold and dreary tomorrow. Same type of weather will be around as we head through our Wednesday and we'll be pretty close to record coldest high temperatures once again.